It's not what we put in our mouths that determines how healthy we are. It's what comes out of our mouths. This statement is, uh, is one that I'm going to carry with me. It's always been um, something that I've known within the depths of my heart, but when I heard it expressed that way, it was, uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I was listening to some Manly Hall earlier, and I have it on random on my MP3 player. It'll come on right in the middle of music. I'll be rocking out, and all of a sudden, here comes Manly Hall with his dry, drawn out voice. And, and I listen, and I listen to every one of them. But uh, he, he was, that's exactly what he said, you know, that it says the most, most modern nutritionists would disagree with that idea, you know. In other words, society metaphorically forcing things down our throat, telling us what makes us healthy, what makes us happy. And consume, consume, consume. Do you feel this way? Take this pill. Do you feel this way? Eat this food. And uh, I don't think we give enough credibility to what we actually say and do. That the words coming out of our mouths, if they're not complete, if they're not true, if we're not following an integrated path, these will cause us more health damage than many of the things that we consider to be very harmful. In fact, I would go as far as to say a negative attitude about life will kill you much faster than a heroin addiction. It all depends on the person. It all depends on the addiction. But our addiction to negative thinking gets us into a lot of trouble. The things that we choose to say are very important and how we choose to say them can affect people for a lifetime. We're fooling ourselves quite often in society by thinking that we're working towards something great and half of the people think we're working towards a religious goal and half the people think we're working towards a material goal. None of us have ever really got together to say what is our goal and what is the long-term solution to angst, to suffering, to starvation. And more than just the issues, the physical issues, it's the mental issues, the way we treat each other, the way we talk to each other. So while we may not have enough food to say feed the world, and I'm just speaking metaphorically because we do if we utilize it properly, but let's say we may not have enough food to feed one area, but there's always a surplus of good attitudes to go around if we're willing to put them forth. If we're willing to actually step outside our box and when everybody else is talking about how rainy it is and crappy outside, say, well, it's watering our crops, you know, to find the, the light, to find the golden lining and everything. We say all kinds of things that we don't mean. We say all kinds of things that we don't think about. And I think that it's very critical that we consider the things that we're saying. And if we do say something that we shouldn't have said and we get called out on it, uh, like we all do, be willing to take accountability and say, okay, maybe I phrased that wrong or that wasn't my intention because <clears throat> negative attitudes create all types of problems within our you know, bodies, our health, our minds. Everything is tied together. There is a, uh, if we were to break this down and say, okay, so what are you trying to say, Josh? What's the, you know, what's the point? The point is that it's not about how long we live our lives. It's not about being healthier so we can live longer because that in a way, that tends to be a, a, a mindset of, well, if I take care of my body, I can live to be really old. So a person's taking care of their body and mind in the hopes of living longer rather than with the hopes of just being an improved person. When I heard uh, someone say that, you know, if we don't perfect things, like if you go back to the Egyptian, you know, idea of reincarnation, that when you go, you know, when you die and you go before the scales and the scales weigh the balance of your deeds and your heart against, you know, gold and all these different metaphors for how did you live your life? And this goes beyond whether you believe in reincarnation or an afterlife or material life or whatever. This is, what are the, the facts? So if you die and 
you go before this judgment and it says, hey, you should have done this. You, or did you live, live your life perfectly? Did you treat everyone respectfully? Were you honest in all your dealings? Now, this is a preposterous notion to think that any one of us can be perfect in all of our dealings. But it doesn't mean that we can't work towards that. And that's what the integration is all about. Developing integrity and seeing the mistakes you made in the past and improving upon them. And so no, no person's going to live a perfect life. No person's, but perfection is really the eye of the beholder anyway. But uh, to see everything as good and everything as part of the big picture is a very essential component to this. And I know that's a tough barrier for some people to cross because a lot of people don't believe that there is anything beyond this. And, uh, you know, this world, this life, this existence. And uh, I don't blame them because there's no evidence that there is, there's no evidence there isn't. This is a personal search, a personal thing. But if we set aside beliefs and ideas and really get to the root of it, what are the things that make a society function? How are we happiest? And it's with these commandments, if you will, the Ten Commandments, which can be summed up in many different cultures. Uh, many different components can be removed and added, but really it's the basics of be a good person, be trustworthy, be honest in your dealings. Don't steal, don't lie, don't covet other people's goods. These aren't things that God commanded. These are things that humans over a period of <laughs> millennia have been able to realize are a system of being that allows for the greatest happiness for the most people. So we could argue about materialism and religion back and forth and back and forth, but amidst these two, they come together with the ideas that there are certain things, certain components that if we ignore, we will suffer because of them. And one of them is what is coming out of our mouths. So no matter how healthy we think we may be in our bodies, if our minds are even slightly ill, it negates all of that. You know, when I look back in my life personally and uh, consider some of the times when I've been not doing so well or felt ill, whether it was a physical illness or uh, just a mental state of depression or anxiety, and I've had plenty of them, um, when I look back at these times, I ask myself, what is it that's causing these problems? and I can find a pattern of negative thinking. And when I say negative thinking, I don't just mean that a person looks at the situation and says, oh, you know, the glass is half empty, that kind of negative thinking. I'm just generalizing the transmutation of thought that you can turn any negative situation into a positive one. But negative thinking is, stress is also included in that. Um, worrying about things that you cannot control. And in my uh, late 20s into my early 30s, I went through a period where I found myself stressing about life. I went through this period where I was worried and I couldn't figure out what it was that I was stressing about. I mean, what was different? What was, what was the same? You know, what, what things was I facing at that time that I hadn't before? And I quickly realized that it was because I was at that point where I wasn't a kid anymore but I hadn't made myself a, uh, a system of existence, if you will. I haven't, hadn't created a career path. I hadn't done all the things society tells us we're supposed to do. And I knew even at that time, of course, that that's not what I wanted to do. I'm not a money-oriented person. I'm not a success-oriented person. I am, uh, am success-oriented, but I don't see success as being monetarily related. Success is how are you living? And uh, there are many things I still have to work on. But seeing that more clearly and, and bringing forth that, that truth that only I am I. I am I. I am. I think, therefore, I am, right? It's the only thing I can know for sure. So by observing everyone else, that's the only way we can really determine uh, how thinking can lead, get us into trouble or bring us to success. So I, went, I realized in my life that at that point uh, I was stressing because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I had a family to support. I didn't have very much money. I didn't know what I was going to do. But when I set all that aside, I realized that it was never really about that. 
that was a way of covering up the the big the big simple answer which is I'm gonna die I'm gonna die and whenever I bring that subject up people just you know they quickly quickly move subjects because it's one people don't want to consider and the older you get the more it becomes you know it can drive you insane if you haven't considered it before um, for a religious oriented person they may spend let's say half their life thinking that they're gonna go to heaven everything's you know set that's what they believe and then maybe they have a moment where they lose their faith and that could be a devastating thing for a person if you believed that your afterlife is going to be this way and you've lived your life according to that and then you find out that what you thought was true isn't true or you no longer believe it uh, that can cause major conflict in the mind it can devastate a person's thinking patterns and for me I've never really had a belief system so it's kind of the opposite I was never a materialist I was never a theologist I didn't believe in really any anything except what I could see here and feel and feeling is being the most important component because of all my senses I've heard sounds that maybe weren't there I've seen things that maybe weren't what I thought they were felt things and brushes that maybe weren't real but when it comes to feeling in the heart that intuition the one that you know when you're doing something right and it feels right and when you do something wrong it feels wrong that, that's the one thing the one thing that we all of us humans can re relate to so no matter how different we all may be and how different of opinions we all have there's that one factor that when you do something wrong to someone it hurts you inside and it, about 99 percent of the people have this I believe you know the one to two percent that are you know sociopaths if you want to call them that people who don't have an emotional connection to their fellows to their neighbors to their friends people who will do anything and stomp on anyone one of those people in a hundred can ruin it for all the other hundred and that's why I believe it was the Inuits who would uh, take their people in their group who were sociopathic or psychopathic tendencies they would take them on a hunt and they'd push them off a cliff and uh, it sounds brutal but it's the only way to keep the peace in an area where food is scarce and people have to live together so metaphorically speaking we have to do the same thing with today's society and we have to find the psychopaths and we have to weed them out but we have to stop allowing the rest of us to think that that's how all people are because when one person does a negative thing it can override ten positive you know motives because everyone always focuses on that negative so that's another component of it you know what are you seeing are you seeing the people that are just doing bad things or are you uh, are you seeing the little groups that are helping people helping children helping families helping the elderly helping people who need it and doing it not for recognition you know, not for status but because they feel it in their hearts that it's the right thing to do those are the people those are the good people and when I look back through history and I think who are my idols who are my heroes they're the philosophers they're the peacekeepers there are people like uh, Manly Hall you know people like uh, Descartes you know people who came up with these wild and crazy ideas but still understood that there was a root to it all a balance and that balance required a person to think critically and to be careful and watch what's coming out of their mouth being a guy who's made a couple thousand videos on YouTube I, things come out of my mouth all the time that I don't mean to say and I'm very cautious about how I say things and I'm very careful to say this is my opinion all, all of this is my opinion and that's how I keep myself from getting into a you know an argument with someone I say well you believe this I believe that that's great all I know is what works for me and uh, living with integrity living with value is more than just being a pious you know jerk with your nose in the air it's about trying to help others trying to help people something else. And I'd like to add before I go the reason why I think that it's so difficult for me personally to grow into wanting to help everyone else uh, and I've gotten better over the years but there was a time when I was very 
family oriented and say kind of get your own protect your own kind of thing and uh, I still hold that family above family comes before you know anything else but I still have wondered what it is that caused causes people to be reluctant to help other people and it's because of social conditioning because we are taught constantly that everyone's out to get us you watch the news and there's always a criminal trying to take your stuff we lock our cars in front of every store and the chances of really having a car broken into in most areas uh, running into 7-eleven or something you know is a pretty pretty slim but we we become accustomed to not trusting other people and I think that that develops into a system of mistrust in maybe our own judgment of people, especially if we trusted someone that wronged us in some way. And uh, so wanting to help people means wanting to see people do better and knowing that it's gonna come maybe at the cost of, you know, some of yours, if, if, if you wanna put it that way. Um, everybody wants to get theirs, but when you see people share, it shows that humanity does have a capacity to want to assist others. And uh, I think it just takes a little bit of time. So anyway, I'll let it go with that. So take care of